Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is quality metrics. This is an important aspect of having a continuous overview of the data generated in the pharmaceutical manufacturing. This data is very useful to evaluate the general trends and attitudes of the manufacturing to comply to the requirements. This is a rolling plan, a dynamic program. This strategy is widely used by regulatory agencies, particularly the USFDA, for scheduling the inspections of manufacturing units. Let us learn more on this. The intent. This system monitors the quality control systems and processes of pharmaceutical manufacturing for continuous improvements. This is almost a dynamic online routine monitoring system. In this arrangement, all the data from quality control testing and other manufacturing processes will be collected and evaluated on the potential impact on the quality of the product. The trends of data are a direct indication of the compliance attitudes of the manufacturing unit. USFDA also uses the same information to help develop compliance and inspection strategies on risk-based evaluation of the manufacturing units. Obviously, USFDA uses this information to schedule manufacturing site inspections. If the trends are in compliance, then the agency may consider longer years than usual for inspection of that particular facility. This also is referred under risk ranking and filtering tool in Quality Risk Management Guide ICH Q9. So the Quality Metrics Guideline prescribes that this guidance outlines FDA's authority to require owners and operators of such establishments to provide upon request records and information that FDA may inspect under Section 704 of the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetics Act. Based on the data, FDA calculates the quality metrics of the product and practices. There are other directives also against which the FDA can request the data from the manufacturer. Based on the data, FDA, in fact, may inform how to develop and strengthen the system further. As part of the process validation, life cycle and pharmaceutical quality systems, the PQS assessment, the use of quality metrics is a requirement for an overview to ensure quality of the product. So this is a requirement as a product life cycle approach. Product life cycle approach means as long as the product is being manufactured at site. Let us see the approach. It is expected to use a quality program to support process validation on product life cycle approach which includes the following aspects. After establishing the validated status of the process and product, it is necessary to monitor the following aspects meticulously as objective evidence. This quality program should be maintained throughout the life cycle of the product. The program should include a system to monitor the process variations and its sources. Data collection and evaluation using a statistical tool is a requirement here. CP, CPK values, X bar graphs, moving range graphs, students T distribution, Six Sigma, etc. would support effective evaluation of this data on variations detect the presence of variations and degree of variations. The evaluated data would provide 
good information on the variations and degree of variations. Understand the impact on the quality of the product and process. Impact analysis of the data would provide insight into this. The potential causes for variations may be concluded based on the data evaluation. Control of variation commensurate with the risk to the process and product. Based on the scientific justifications, control of variations should be prescribed. Justification can be best arrived by ICHQ9 tools, FMEA, FMACA, HA, ZOP, etc. HA, CCP and PHA can also be used. Refer ICHQ9 for more details. Let us see how the quality program is designed. The quality program should include a provision to collect the following information on a regular basis. How a quality program should be designed to comply to the requirements of quality metric submission? Let us see. Number of lots attempted for the product. Number of batches manufactured during the requested period should be provided. Generally, FDA requests information for one or two years. Number of batches failed. So, the number of batches that fail to meet the specifications should be provided. Number of lots pending for disposition for more than 30 days. Number of batches pending for various reasons for more than a month should be provided. Number of OAS investigations including stability failures if any. So, number of out of specification investigations for the required period should be provided. The OAS data should also include stability study, study related if any. Number of lots released including stability testing. Details of number of batches released and the stability study conducted should be provided. All this information should be tabulated for easy reference to submit to FDA. There is a timeline within which the data should be submitted. For example, if FDA requests for the quality matrix data from October 1st 2016 to September 30, 2017, you are supposed to provide the data before December 1st of 2017. This is how FDA works on quality metrics. FDA may also request for any additional data. Also, the other information needed by FDA include Number of OAS results invalidated. Invalidated means that there was no laboratory error in the analysis. The failure is confirmed. Number of quality complaints received. This number should include any verbal complaint from the customers, any market returns also. The verbal complaints have to be regularized by recording through a validated system. Number of lots attempted which are released for distribution or for the next stage of manufacture. This is data on release of intermediate stages for further processing. Were the annual product reviews APR completed within 30 days of annual due date for the product? The SOP on APR compilation should have a provision to complete the review within a specific period and there should be a checkpoint whether or not the compilation was completed within 30 days of the actual scheduled date. Number of APRs required for the product. Depending upon the number of products, the APR should be compiled. This is the Total data FDA requests as part of quality metrics. This information has to be captured as prescribed in Annexer A of the quality metrics guide 
dated July 2015. FDA may request for the APR for review of the data for the period and products targeted. FDA may also request for the plan for continual improvement for the reported data. Important parameters for quality metrics. Lot acceptance rate is 1 minus 6, where X is the number of specification related rejected lots in a time frame divided by the number of lots attempted by the same establishment in the same time frame. Product quality complaint rate is the number of product quality complaints received for the product divided by the total number of lots of the product released in the same time frame. Invalidated out of specification that is OIS rate is the number of OIS test results for the finished product invalidated by the establishment divided by the total number of OIS test results divided by the total number of tests performed by the establishment in the same time frame. These parameters may be practiced routinely for getting a good quantitative evaluation of the trends. The calculations are very simple to work out. This information has to be captured in APRs. FDA calculates in the same way to evaluate the establishment's performance or capability. There is a similar provision in the guideline to calculate APR compilation on time rate. Scientifically, we can calculate this kind of rates for any quality parameter. There is a guide ASTM E2281 for evaluation of process capability CP and the process capability index CPK. Process performance and process index also can be calculated using the same guideline. Of course, there are plenty of other such guides to help you to evaluate these parameters. Other important information. The guideline provides detailed instructions on the data to be submitted in Appendix A. All minute details are provided here in this Appendix A. You may go through the guidance for more details. Detailed worksheet data tables. Templates are also provided for product specific information, mandatory data, and optional metrics. The templates are much easier to capture the necessary data without any miss outs. I hope that the intent and requirements for quality metrics is understood well. This system is very useful for routine operations also. This would have a continuous monitoring of compliance to GMP requirements. Also, the data is evaluated quantitatively by statistical techniques. Read the quality matrix guidance for more minute details that have to be worked out and submitted to FDA for review whenever they request for such data. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.